So I'm going to talk about um, headless CMSs. Um, although you're more React people, so I'm going to try and steer away from Vue and Nuxt uh, as much as I can. Um, who knows about headless CMSs here? Who uses them? Kind of. Okay. So a uh, headless CMS is uh, like WordPress uh, is for you know old school um, front end, uh, but it doesn't ex um, it doesn't control the front end anymore. So um, you still have the ability to give your editors access to your website to your uh, CMS, uh, but they manage the content and that's it. They don't actually. Uh, serve anything on the front end. What you do is you give the control of the front end to a single page application or you know a server side application um, or just a JavaScript application in general and you um, you kind of um, take information from the headless CMS um, via REST APIs or GraphQL if you can. Um, so I'm going to skip who I am, um, some GIFs. Um, my experience with um, headless CMS starts with um, a migration from AngularJS 1.5, which is a great framework. I'm joking. Um, and uh, this is kind of my reaction, very simplified, because uh, it happened way more strongly and, uh, you know, emphatically. Um, but, um, I'm not going to talk about Axe. I'm going to show the GIFs for a while. Um, and um, basically, uh, Angular is an MVC framework. So you have model, view, controller, and uh, lots of places where things talk with each other. And uh, I don't like that because uh, it seems like you're writing Java, and uh, we're front end people. We're lazy. We don't want to do that. Um, so we. Um, we decided to go with Vue, mostly because I decided, uh, and uh, no one knew more than me at that point. So I was lucky because I wanted to work with Vue. Um, but again, this is applicable to React as well, which I'm working on now anyway. Um, so what the CMS is, I'm going to actually open a live example. Um, don't copy my password. Okay, no one is connected to this public Wi-Fi, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so we have WordPress. Uh, probably most of you are familiar with WordPress. Okay, I'm gonna assume that. Uh, but if effectively, you got a dashboard on on here. That's the main page, and then you got uh, posts. You got uh, custom posts pages, uh, and then some settings and stuff. Um, with WordPress, the first of all, WordPress is free. Uh, okay, so if you wanna use a Contentful or you know Prismic or whatever CMS, feel free. They have a ratio limit, so if you are not too careful and the people keep asking about those gifts, they are gonna hit that limit and it's gonna be a problem and you have to pay. Um, so with WordPress, you don't. Uh, although it's not as fast, uh, of course, uh, as WordPress. Um, PHP, um, but um, you have custom fields. Um, this is a plugin. It's a free plugin. There is a better version, but it's not much better. But uh, the free plugin allows you to create custom fields for each page. So you can specify title, uh, which is a text, um, you know, field, and uh, you know you have other stuff like images and repeating lists and flexible content and dynamic. So you can literally, if you wanted, you could create a CMS with a you know, design system that you can, the, the editor says, OK, I want this um, you know, banner on the home page. They click it, and they write the text, and they're happy. And, and you show that banner in the front end. But that's a JSON file, basically. It's just a JSON response. So that's good. Uh, it's free, again, I want to stress that. Uh, literally, you can build a static site, host it for free on Netlify, and have a free WordPress CMS. Uh, well, you have to pay the hosting for WordPress, but hey, no, no one is perfect. Or you could, you know, spin up your computer, leave it on, and that's your server. Um, if you want to go for really free, um, or VPN, or whatever. Uh, 
Um, so you got your JSON requests, and then I'm going to go to the WordPress uh, front end. It's fast. Um, I'm joking now. Is the the one that you showed before the 83 percent? So uh, you can see that I'm refreshing the page here, and um, XHR. Uh, so first of all, you don't see H H H HTTP requests here. Um, there is this content CSS is coming from um, again uh, an extension, uh, but there is no um, no request here made uh, for the home page. Uh, there are some service workers going on, uh, but uh, effectively, uh, all the content is static. So if I, you know, uh, check the HTML, everything is there. Um, I can view source. Uh, where can I view source? Never mind. Uh, there should be a view source here, right? Is it? Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. So view source. Uh, this is the critical CSS, don't be scared. Uh, this is because it's a static site and got some CSS there, but this is effectively less than one kilobyte. Um, and then you got some minified HTML, which looks horrible. Uh, but effectively, you can see here that's the content and it's server side rendered. Um, but it looks prettier here. So let's look at this. Um, you can see you got some sections here. Um, it's a fairly small site, but uh, we got components here. We got um, a face. Uh, we got um, you know some sliders and uh, other components. So all this is lazy loaded. So you're gonna see whatever I scroll. Uh, let me just refresh this. Disable cache. Yeah. So I'm scrolling, and you can see like stuff appearing. And that's loading the images. Uh, that's loading another image. And whenever I scroll down, that happens, right? So this is why I was just meta, meta doing the talk now. I'm referring to the previous talk uh, about lazy loading. And you know, loading less is more. Uh, you're kind of loading the least amount possible. So literally just this image and this text. Um, but the text itself is coming from a, an API eventually. Um, the site is static, but it's generated once, right? So if we look at this page, why there is no API? OK, well, it's completely static. I'm impressed. But um, <laughs> to be honest, um, I thought there was an API call here. But let's go to contact page. I'm sure there is an API. Ah, there is. Nice. Uh, so here is the response from WordPress. It's saying, OK, I got you know the content, the title of the page, the GUI ID, whatever that is, title, uh, type, and stuff. And then you got ACF here. That ACF is the custom field. So you can see title. I got some SEO meta tags, uh, background image, which is that, uh, that bit over there. So this is effectively a free CMS can do that. and. In order to do that, you have to just call uh, an API, which is this. So if effectively, if I copy this link here, you get the response back. Obviously, it's a GET request. You could put it like an authenticated uh, request if you wanted. But um, I got caching on WordPress, so I don't care. Um, and that's effectively all you need. So you've got the ACF. You can work with that object. Uh, and if you had GraphQL, you could just load this object here, but the REST API actually spits out the whole page, so that's a downer. But um, yeah, you got all the you know background image, uh, all the sizes from WordPress. You don't have to buy Cloudinary accounts for this. It just gives you the all the sizes you need, and then you know some other stuff that you customize like SEO. Um, so effectively, the Adler CMS. Um, is allowing you to um, abstract the um, the layer, the view layer from the logic and from the content side. So, um, well, the logic is still in your front end, but the content comes from the headless CMS. So, why that is important? Well, imagine you're in a corporation like Vodafone, and you you have to go to your editors to say, okay, I want to change this banner for you know, the latest offer. 
Um, without headless CMS, you have to go actually in the code, change it, or uh, you know, even if you have a content management, the you can change it, but then you have to test whether the change is going to break stuff. But here you have control of the front end completely. So you, wherever the data is, you can either cache it or you can, you know, accept the new stuff and update, uh, which is really powerful, I think. Um, so next um, is a server-side framework uh, on top of Vue. Um, why I think it's better than React. <laughs> um, no, I'm joking. Uh, everything is. Uh, Next is based on Next.js, which is the React counterpart, although they are much better, but uh, again, not biased. Um, but you can see, well, you can, if I zoom in, uh, these are all the chunks that it creates automatically. You don't have to do that yourself because Next is beautiful. So um, it, every page you create, it will lazy load it and split it. And uh, you can see pages, destination here, privacy policy, who needs that. Uh, you know, and the app itself is 76 kilobytes, which is, uh, you know, much less than uh, what React uh, normally does if you don't optimize it. Um, and you can see here, this is bundle, uh, Webpack bundle analyzer, but there are other applications that do that. Um, you can see all the chunks here, the layouts, the pages. Uh, so this is really, uh, it takes away the abstraction from you. If you are not really expert on, you know, performance, you can still kind of achieve a decent uh, size and decent bundle size uh, just by loading one of these frameworks, um, which I suggest, you know, someone to try because um, they're really magic. Um, but coming back to the, uh, you know, application and headless CMS, um, this, um, is loaded, so everything here is not loaded, and this part here, the common and app, is loaded on on the first load. But uh, what happened is uh, this swiper here, if you see here, it is loaded in the main bundle. So uh, what I've done following those practices that we saw before is that I uh, took this swiper JS, which is the slider bit, um, and I moved that into a lazy loaded component. So that chunk here is going to go away. It's going to go over here in one of these files uh, where the index page is, basically. And then that chunk, huge chunk of code is going to disappear from my bundle. So that is 50k gzipped, more, more or less, um, that I'm saving. And that might not be much for a desktop, but it surely is for my uh, you know, Nexus 3G with a four times slowdown, apparently. So that uh, was at least 20% uh, of the speed improvements, uh, plus the other stuff that I mentioned. Um, so one way to start with this is to, even if you don't choose WordPress, uh, you there are lots of you know free accounts for headless CMSs, like I think Prismic and uh, what was the other one? Um, Contentful, yes, uh, you're listening, nice. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so all these CMSs have a free, uh, free tier that you can kind of develop on and try things out. And uh, they really are powerful and a good addition to any kind of mid to high tier company. Um, but effectively, um, they work similar to WordPress does, uh, but they have kind of custom fields built in, so you don't have to buy or uh, install the plugins yourself, but um, this effectively is doable with any framework. So it could be JavaScript by itself. It's just an API call, right? So you go to you know your contact page, you load the JSON for that contact page. You get a preview, you see, okay, I have a ACF field. I'm gonna do acf.background.image uh, and I'm gonna load it, that's all. Um, so this is really good for uh, handing over websites if you're a freelancer or uh, you know if you have a big company, you can just give it to the editor team and they can do their uh, own magic to the content while you just care about the performance and the front end and the style, uh, which is all you should really need to care about rather than just changing that line of text every two weeks. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, let me just zoom out because there is a nice GIF. 
yeah. He's impressed. Um, so what is SSR? Uh, just briefly before I close, um, if you really want to go down this route, uh, not Nux could be next or could be just you just trying uh, server-side rendering by itself. Uh, don't, don't try server-side rendering by yourself because it's super complex. You have to know about Node.js, about you know, um, hydration and all these things. So uh, I suggest starting with a framework and then slowly going down to how it works behind the scenes. Um, one thing to note is that if you have a um, client uh, application and a server, they all need to render at the same time, or more or less uh, the server runs first, of course, and then it spits out some HTML that the browser is going to read. But they have to match. So if you are loading a slider that relies on window object or document, then be careful because this is probably view specific, but it's going to appear for you as well. You're going to say, OK, I, I see uh, a div here, but it's not in the client, or vice versa, it's not on the server, but it's in the client. So what's going on? Um, and of course, the window uh, might be the problem, or it might be you that haven't closed a tag properly, and the server doesn't know what to do. So um, that's quite important if you see that you have kind of unmatching content from what you render and from what you see in the client. Um, remember that window is not on node, uh, so you, you need to do that. Uh, no live demo, because I showed it before. Um, I have a repo here. This is Nux specific. I created like a boilerplate. Uh, if you want to try it, you can install it, and you spin off a WordPress even locally, and you can kind of fetch your content from there. It's kind of almost ready to go for live, um, which is uh, going to be in the slide link um, if you're interested. Cool. Thank you, then.